Hey everyone, come on in. I'm Slushy. Thanks for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to show you how I can easily turn this into this. Hey, you missed one. Using the Godot game engine. Let's go. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, my name's Slushy and I like to play and make indie games. If you are making an indie game, one of the most common things you're going to have in your game are collectibles. Items that you want the player to collect. Coins, rubies, anything really. You really want to do everything you can to try and make the player want to collect that collectible. Otherwise, your game is just going to be very boring and static no matter what it is the player ends up collecting. I'm working on a game called Jetpack Miner using the Godot game engine. One of the things I'm going to show you today is a script that I'm going to give you that you can use in your own game, which will easily make any 2D node hover up and down or shake side to side. There's a link for that below in the description, and I'm going to show you how to use it. There are basically three things I like to do to make a collectible fun to collect. The first one is I like to make it so the collectible moves somehow, usually kind of hovering up and down. Okay, so I've got my Godot editor open on the right side with my gem scene open. And I'm going to go to the script attached to the, my gem node, and I'm going to add a variable for the behavior. So I'm going to create a new variable called hover shake. And it's going to be an instance of the hover shake 2D class. So I use hover shake 2D.new to instantiate it. Next, I go to the ready function somewhere, and I add hover shake .init, passing in self as the parameter. This will initialize the behavior and set default values for hovering. Lastly, I go to the process function and I simply pass the delta into the update method of the hover shake behavior. The second thing I like to do when making collectibles is give them some kind of glowing orbs floating off of them or some kind of sparkles shimmering off of them every once in a while. I like to have something more than just a simple object floating in space. I like to have particles there as well. Alright, so I'm in Affinity Designer where I like to design most of my graphics for my games and I'm going to design a sparkle graphic for these gems. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the shape tool over here and select the star tool which I already had selected, and then I'm going to make it so there are only four points in this star. Think of a, a shimmer that you commonly see in movies like this. You just kind of click and drag and you've got four points here, but they don't quite look like what I'm talking about yet. So first I'm going to change the fill color to be a gradient. I want it to be a radial gradient. completely white on both ends of the gradient but one of the ends is going to be fully transparent just take the opacity right down on this one then I'm going to take the inner radius and just kind of dial it down a bit and then lastly I'm just going to stretch it out until the four points look about equal. Resizing it just to see what it looks like. Move it around on the gem. Looks pretty good. Looks like a sparkle, looks like a shine. I can just imagine these kind of just shimmering off of these gems in the game. I'm going to size this just a bit big for export, so that way we don't risk losing any detail of these sparkles when we import them into the game. Back over at the Godot engine, we've got our sparkle imported now. It automatically imports anything it detects as a new file. And so we're going to add a particle 2D node to this to get things started. We're going to go ahead and select our root node of the scene, the gem node here, and then push Command A or Control A to bring up the new node window and type in Particles 2D. Then over on the right side here, we're going to select Process Material and create a new one by going to the arrow, the little arrow indicator, and select New Particles Material. Now you can already see there's a little particle system right here. Uh, created for us with default textures. So we need to change that texture to, to be our sparkle that we created earlier. So, so we'll go to the textures section and select uh, the arrow next to the texture, load 
and pick our texture image that we created. And now you can see the default particles have been replaced with our sparkle texture. We'll go to the gravity section here and just turn off the gravity um, for now. We'll go to the emission shape section and make it a sphere and just set the radius so that we can see our sparkles appearing in a, a good enough pattern to look like they're shining on the gem. Next we'll go to the scale section and just kind of uh, turn it down a bit. We don't need the sparkles to be so big that they're overpowering the, the gem itself. Set the scale random to be something small. I'll make a new scale curve texture and kind of make it start off a little small, get really big, and then finally shrink all the way down out of existence. Then I'm gonna to go to the angular velocity section and give it some angular velocity, some spin, so it moves a little bit, and just make that, uh, make that a bit random too, so you never know which way it's gonna spin. I'm gonna change the amount down to four. We don't need, uh, a, we don't need eight sparkles uh, for each gem. I think four is plenty. And now let's see how it looks in the game. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. We'll give it a bit of gravity now. That looks really good. Look at those things just falling off the gems. That looks great. And one of the tricks here is to set the local coordinates to false. Doing that will make it so the sparkle particles will appear in the world space instead of the gem space. So when the gem moves, the particles won't move with it. They're independent objects. Look at that. All we did was add a particle system to the gem itself. Even just that was enough to make it look much better. It gives it such a dynamic feeling and all we did was add some sparkles to it, but there's more. The third thing and last thing I like to do when making collectible objects is when you collect them, it needs to do something. It shouldn't just disappear out of thin air. Again, that's really boring and doesn't make sense, frankly. One of the most common things I like to have my collectibles do when you collect them is somehow emit some kind of explosion or perform some kind of animation that lets you know it's collected. Again, this usually involves particles. Particles, as you'll find out, are extremely useful in making your game look cool and just juicing up your game overall and giving it a more dynamic feel. Back over in Godot, I'm gonna add a node to my gem scene and call it gem collect. I'm going to use this as kind of a container node to contain uh, all the other nodes I'm going to use for my explosion of sparkles when you collect a gem. I'm going to go ahead and add a particles 2D node to my gem collect node. I'm going to call it collect explosion. I'm going to assign it the same texture as we did the other one. And we're going to set this particle system up to be uh, a one-time explosion as opposed to kind of a continuous uh, waterfall of particles. And then uh, we're going to create a new particles material as the process material. And I'm going to give it some initial velocity. And it looks like it's going in the wrong direction, so we're going to rotate this node uh, 90 degrees. Now it is exploding in the correct direction, at least for now. I'm going to actually give it some gravity, but it's going to be in a, uh, it's not going to be gravity going downward because we rotated it. It's going to have to be coming from the side. So next I want to make it so the sparkles fade out of existence over time instead of just disappearing instantly. I'm going to go to the color section and click color ramp and choose a new gradient texture and create a new gradient and I'm going to make it uh, a small gradient it just needs to be 100 pixels. It doesn't need to be anything bigger than that. And then I'm going to make it so the gradient again goes from white to white. Only the second white color is also 100% clear. That causes it to slowly fade out over time as it goes across the gradient. Look at that, that looks great. Next, I'm just gonna play around with some things. I'm gonna play around with the angular velocity and give it just some random spin as it shoots out. I'm gonna update the initial velocity a bit, make it a bit more random so the sparkles burst out at random speed so they're a bit more spread out. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna right click on my node in the tree and select Save Branches Scene. I'm gonna save this as a scene in my file system 
and then I'm gonna delete it from my gem node because I don't actually need it there. I'm gonna be using this in the main game loop and when a player collects the gem, I'm gonna create a new explosion where the gem is located on the screen. So in my collect gem function, I'm just gonna create a new variable for the explosion. And I'm gonna preload my scene. So that way it only loads from the file system once the first time I use it. And for every other time afterwards, it just uses a cached version of the scene. I'm gonna call instance on that scene to create an instance of that scene. I'm gonna set the explosion's position to be the gem's position. And I'm gonna add the explosion to my game scene with add child. Finally, I'm going to set emitting equals true on the particle system inside our explosion scene. Look at that, isn't that great? Dope. Now when you collect the gems, there's an explosion of sparkles, which looks awesome. But something's still missing. The gem just disappears without a trace. That still doesn't look quite right. We need one more thing to make this look perfect. So what needs to happen is when you collect the gem, uh, I'm going to make it kind of just float up a bit and then disappear. It sounds simple, but it's going to look amazing and complete this overall effect just perfectly. To create this effect, I'm going to use the tween I've already got in my game scene, rather than create a new tween just for this. To tween properties on nodes, you call the interpolate property function of the tween and pass in the node and all the parameters you want to tween. I just tell it to move up about 200 pixels and fade from full opacity to zero opacity in about a quarter of a second. It looks so smooth. You see these things floating up and down, just hovering in the air, giving off all these sparkles, and you're like, oh my gosh, I just gotta get one of those. And when you do, amazing things happen. An explosion of sparkles and the gem flies up and disappears. It looks awesome. Thank you everyone for checking this video out. It really means a lot to me. I wanna go ahead and give you the script I wrote for this so you can use it yourself to make any object of yours float up and down. I'm also going to include the scene for the gem as well which has the gem graphic and the sparkle graphic and the particle system in it already prepared so you can view it and use it in your games right away. And please, if you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. And also make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified when I create more videos like this one. Thanks everybody, be excellent to each other, and I'll see you next time.